Hello and welcome back. So if you're looking at this, you if you've been following the series for a while and you're looking at this, you're probably thinking to yourself, what did I miss? And the answer is you didn't miss anything. Um, so what I've done here is I've started now incorporating all this extra data into our JSON file. If you remember what we looked at before, we had something look like this, and I left a lot of this information blank. In this video, we're going to start working with all this other data over here, and I'll provide this in a link in the description down below. And I'm also going to provide this extra bit of code. Uh, in this video, I'm not going to explain what's happening here in depth. I'm not going to go through and type it all out for you, uh, because a lot of this is really repetitive just to extract the data from over here in the JSON file and add it in over here. I'll go through line by line and just quickly explain it. But what this is essentially doing is it's creating a more dynamic network graph. And that's fantastic. So it means that we can actually start looking at this information like this, and I'll show you before we go back and explain it. So these are the first 10 letters, I believe, of Alcuin's. And I want to show you something very important right now, uh, because this is going to become important later in the video. I want you to look at this specific node here, Joseph 2. What we are looking at here is a non-dynamic network graph. And I'm going to go ahead and show you in, uh, later in the video why this is going to be different when we actually make this network graph with dynamic edges. What we are going to, going to see here is Joseph's relationship with letter 8, not just be singular. This yellow line indicates that Joseph is cited in letter 8. What it does not, it does not indicate, however, is another relationship that Joseph too has, and that is his uh, status as a recipient of letter 8 as well. So let's go ahead and just close this for right now and go back to what's happening here. So what I have done here is I've added another node in our network graph, and this node is Alcuin. And we just see the simple color here for Alcuin, nothing fancy. I'm not establishing a parameter for this or anything like, or argument in our uh, main map data function. And if we go down, a lot of this is going to look similar, except for right here. Just like before, when I go through and iterate across each of these letters, I'm not just extracting uh, the manuscript anymore. I'm also extracting the recipients right here. So we see the exact same format, uh, letter and in brackets, recipients to extract this tag. And we see that we am also extracting the people cited. The recipients is the recipient of a specific letter, and the people cited are the people whom Alcuin references within that letter. So here we see he references just a single person in a letter that he sends to a friend. And down here we see that he references many people. And if you are paying close attention, you'll notice he actually cites himself in his own letters. And that's why down here, which I'll explain in just a second, I've got a way to account for that so we don't see Alcuin referencing himself in the network graph. So let's just kind of keep on moving down. What we've done now is because we've added Alcuin 1 into our network graph, like we see up here in line 24, I also have uh, an edge added between Alcuin and the actual letter. So this will actually tie Alcuin to the letters that he's actually sending. If we could move down, this should be the very familiar. It's the exact same thing that we saw before. It is a uh, the relationship between uh, each letter and each manuscript. And then if we go down here, we see the same thing kind of repeated for recipient. We see a node added for each recipient in these lists in the JSON file. And we see a recipient shape and a recipient color. And then what we see here is an edge added between the letter and the recipient and another edge added between Alcuin and the recipient. And this has its own special little color that's not an argument. If we move down to line 42, we do something similar for people cited. We add a line between uh, the person cited and uh, and uh, the letter so we can see what people are actually referenced in which letters so we can fully kind of map out this entire epistolary network. And I've added this simple thing that if Alcuin 1 is not in cited, then go ahead and do this. And what that's going to do is it means that if Alcuin 1 is a person who is cited, it's going to simply just skip over that and not draw an edge between them. So that's what's happening here. And what I want to do is I want to show you another little argument that we can now set in. And we're going to set in this. And I'm going to get rid of the show buttons because I really don't. Um, actually, I forgot we did this in our thing. Show buttons equals false. That'll make it 100%. And we can see everything. So what we're going to do you know what? I take it back. I'm actually going to do true so I can actually show you this 
in real time. So we're going to add in the filter and we're going to make sure it's just edges. So we're going to see the edges buttons. So this is going to be fun. So let's go ahead and map this out. So what you're going to see now is a much more uh, complicated looking graph. And the reason why it's more complicated looking is because you have dynamic edges. If I disable that, it's a much simpler looking graph. Let's zoom in on that character I told you to look out for. And I believe it was Joseph too. So I'm going to do smooth. And what you see instantly, I don't know if you noticed, go back and rewatch it. Actually, I'll just go ahead and redo it. You should notice that Joseph now has a new edge populate from line eight. And that is because we are looking at a dynamic network graph of edges. It's so what this is allowing us to see now that we couldn't see before is a multifaceted relationship between Joseph and letter eight. Joseph is not only the a recipient of letter eight, he's also cited in it. And the recipient color is this orange color and cited is this yellow color. So when I disable it, we see that he's only cited in that letter, even though we know for a fact he was also a recipient of it. By activating dynamic edges, we can see that multifaceted relationship. So that's all I really wanted to cover in this video was that idea of enabling dynamic edges. The benefit of that if you ha is that if you have a multi-layered or a kind of more nuanced network graph where people have uh, different kinds of relationships that you want to represent with different edge colors, then I highly encourage you to use this simple command here, g dot set underscore edge underscore smooth. And this is going to allow you to set the kind of edge. Now you have a whole bunch that you can actually pick from. In fact, I'll go ahead and rerun this just so you can see. So we can go through and we can actually play with all of these, but I believe dynamic is the only one that is going to allow for you to see those multifaceted relationships. Uh, you can also change the kind of force direction if it's vertical, horizontal, or none. Uh, you can ex experiment with the roundness of these things. You can actually make them straighter. You can make them more round. You can kind of find something in between. Uh, but go through, play with each of these. Uh, some of them do pretty cool things. I think that's personally a really cool looking style. But the only one that I know of that actually allows for you to see those multifaceted relationships is dynamic. And for that reason, I would highly encourage you to experiment with that and see if it works for your data. That's going to be it for this video. And the next video, we are going to start doing some rather more complicated things. What I'm going to show you how to do is I'm going to show you how to create a simple website that looks something like this so that we can map our data. It'll take it a second to load. Oh, it actually helps if you establish parameters. And you can actually set parameters from that exact same PyViz file and start creating dynamic network graphs that you can interact with and control with simple HTML and uh, JavaScript encoding. So what we're going to do is we're going to be taking this really cool, really useful JavaScript or HTML page, uh, which has got JavaScript all up in it. And we're going to start writing some very simple JavaScript uh, uh, code and some HTML code to interact with this PyViz network graph on an actual website. So we're going to start taking a more uh, practical approach to PyViz in the realm of web implementation. That's coming up in the next few videos. That's all for this one though. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below and visit us at pythonhumanities.com.